the chat box. So today's topic is physical structures, quality standards for physical structures. Page number, I'm not sure of. These are few, a few many topics together uh, compiled in this one presentation. Okay. Mostly about the physical structure of, of a hospital building and what kind of quality protocols you may have to follow, follow through when you are like preparing a hospital or the hospital is already made, but you have to take care of certain things. Okay, process wise, if you have to take care of certain things, what are things you have to look out for? Okay, so these all come under the physical, physical structures protocol okay so page number just check those who have the textbook quality standards for the prevention for prevention and control of infection if you find this topic uh, you can mention the page number in the chat box for others for the reference for others who are joining late So, quality standards for the prevention and control of infection. First is your responsibility. Okay. Who takes the responsibility? Definitely it's the hospital leadership. Okay. It, the responsibilities come from the hospital's leadership to make sure that they have budget, they have resources, they have enough budgetary allocations done. Okay. Particularly for this area of prevention and control of infection infection control majorly okay budgeting has to be done a lot of equipments training uh, posters of hand hygiene and all okay is required okay a, a big chunk of your budgeting will go into prevention of infection prevention and control of infection so the responsibility the key respons responsibility lies with the heads of the department of each clinical as well as non clinical areas along with the hospital leadership whoever is the administrator ceo director okay so uh, they all are also responsible uh, for these quality standards and next coming to the resources what resources you require definitely you will uh, if it is a multi specialty hospital or even a hospital with more than 50 bed okay 50 bed or 100 bed you will you should have your own cssd okay central sterile supply department should be there and uh, enough amount of gloves, gowns, all the PPE should be present. Disinfection, sterilization, decontamination, uh, mat uh, materials, liquids, detergents, dis disinfectants required. Okay, it should be available throughout. Okay, all around the year, these resources should be available. Next is the goals of your infection control program. Is it clear to all your Is the goals clear to all the infection control uh, nurses? Not just the nurses, are the infection control nurses clear clarifying these goals and objectives to everyone, specifically the clinical practitioners? Okay, under the clinical practitioners, doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, everyone who is touching the patient, okay, they come under infection control program, okay. So the goals of the infection control program, is it clear? Okay, uh, just by having a written statement, it's not enough. Okay, uh, those who are reading that written statement, are they able to comprehend it? Okay, that is important. Are they able to understand the meaning of it? Because the, the, the guidelines, the manner in which the guidelines are written is usually it has to be decoded. Majority of those guidelines has to be decoded with some examples. Okay, with some practical uh, shows or practical videos or practical induction training classes, which is shown. Okay, so the goals of the infection control program has to be decoded. Okay, it has to be communicated well. The receiving end, whoever is on the receiving end, they should be com they should be able to comprehend these goals. Okay, only when they understand where they have to reach, they will have a pathway. They will create a pathway to reach that place. Okay, those are the goals of infection control program. The medical equipment, devices, and supplies. Especially when it comes to equipments, preventive maintenance has to be done. That should be the main strategy, okay, to reduce the uh, reduce any any issues with customer satisfaction. 
okay preventive management should be your main priority okay breakdown maintenance will happen like consider breakdown maintenance as near miss events okay when you have a protocol of breakdown maintenance and when you when you consider breakdown maintenance as a near miss event uh there is a there will be a shift in the way how you will treat your equipments and devices as well as supplies okay so focus more on preventive maintenance when it comes to equipments devices and supply okay prevention is much better than waiting for something which have to happen and then taking a corrective action okay uh, infectious waste yellow bucket okay yellow bin always infectious waste always goes in yellow bin okay with a biohazard symbol if it is infectious sharps needles it has to be a leak proof puncture proof bin okay Then the construction risk, construction risk that you uh, that you take. Some of the other part of the hospitals usually undergo some renovations. Okay, uh, some part, so, sort of new constructions and renovations are always happening at hospital uh, uh, hospital level at any any department. It could be clinical or non clinical. Wherever a construction is taking place, certain degree of risk is associated. Okay, certain degree of risk is associated with um with how how the dust or the noise pollution that will be there. Okay, any pipelines of the hospitals, very specifically oxygen by pipelines pipelines within the hospital. If that get disrupted, okay, that would be that may lead to a fire hazard. Okay, which you cannot risk. So construction risk has to be critically analyzed how which part of the hospital will undergo renovation, how it will affect your patient care, okay? How the patients will be affected because of this renovation or construction taking place within the hospital premises. Okay, these things has to be clarified before you start the construction. Okay, do you have to move a department to some other space temporarily, okay? Or do you have to shut down certain departments temporarily? Okay, these things have to be rectified before a construction has been has begun okay then we have transmission of infections and under transmission of infections uh universal standard precautions transmission based precautions both have has to be put into use okay when you are using universal standard precautions uh, of infection control it means any blood body body fluid and all patients should be considered as infectious. So naturally, you will use your gloves. Uh, you will you follow hand hygiene. Masks will be used. Okay, whenever you are treating uh, the patients, all the needles and sharps should be considered as infectious. So naturally, uh, you no recapping. Okay, treating the uh, infectious needles then and there itself. Whenever as as soon as you have used it immediately, it has to be discarded. Okay. Next, we have the quality improvement and program education. So uh, under the quality in, uh, improvement and program education, every department will have their quality standards. Okay, and a part, a, a void should be there to improve more. Okay, a, a area should be kept where more improvement can be done. Okay, a task force within or a, or a team within that department should be uh, in charge of how, where new strategies or new improvement strategies can be implemented. Okay, an eye out for uh, the quality improvement should be there. Usually, we call it as a Kaizen process. Okay, and then you have the program education uh, in, uh, in, uh, in service training, induction training. Uh, continuous nursing education, continuous medical education, okay, they all come under program education. So uh, teaching quality standards also should be a part of program education. Usually when it comes to program education, uh, something cl clinical, medical, evidence-based practices, usually these are the topics that are uh, taught to the uh, clinical practitioners. Okay, very rarely quality standards become a topic of discussion. 
So more quality standard related discussion should be implemented in program education as well. Okay. So far, is it clear prevention and control of infection? Briefly, it's just a, a, these topics we just have to read through for exams. Major detailed questions will not come from, come from this part of the textbook. You just have to read these topics two to three times. That is more than enough. Understand the concept that is more than enough. Is it clear so far? Which all areas quality standards is affected when it comes to prevention and control of infection? Next is medical equipment, devices, and supply. Okay. Bottom line is preventive maintenance should be your priority, not breakdown maintenance. And if breakdown maintenance has to be done, make sure it has not caused any affliction on the caregiver, okay, or the care receiver, patient, or the clinical caregivers. Okay. So usually uh, the three types of disinfection lower low level intermediate high level disinfection sterilization okay different uh, strategies of storage after cleaning and sterilization these are the protocols you have to follow for any medical equipment device and supply because it is going to touch the patient's body okay so based on this plodding classification because all these topics when it comes to disinfection different types of disinfection different strategies in sterilization how do you store uh, equipments after sterilization and after cleaning? What do you do? We discuss all these in a completely separate chapter, okay, in infection control. So you can check those uh, recordings as well to have a clear cut idea. Okay, so lower level disinfection is done for the equipments that touch the patient's body, okay, and but not inside of the patient's body okay external patient's body which does not have any cuts or wounds or any rashes okay for example uh stethoscope spipomanometer uh the, the the thermometers okay these can undergo low level disinfection okay just what what do you use in low level disinfections plain soap and water or 70% spirit, okay, that is also used as a low-level disinfection, okay. So, these are examples of low-level disinfection. High-level disinfection, it is used for equipments or devices or even supplies which cannot withstand the high heat, moisture or pressure which is used in sterilization, especially autoclave, okay. Articles which cannot undergo autoclave or which cannot be put in hot air oven as well. Okay, the next best option is high level disinfection. Okay, usually it is done for all the uh, devices and equipments used in scopies. Okay, endoscopy, colonoscopy, sigmoidoscopy, laryngoscopy. Okay, these are any any equipments that are fiber optic in nature. Okay, high level disinfection will be done for that. And uh, Next, you have sterilization. Uh, different types of sterilization is physical, chemical, okay, uh, plasma, pyrolysis, radiation-based sterilization. These are different types of sterilization, okay, uh, thermal as well. So, autoclave using moist heat and uh, dry heat sterilization. That is hot air oven. Moist heat sterilization is autoclave. Then gases, that is ethylene oxide, okay. And then we have gamma rays for irradiation-based sterilization. These are the different strategies of sterilization based on the area where you are performing as well as like the healthcare system. Uh, and within a healthcare system, ethylene oxide can be used sometimes. Autoclave and hot air oven is always used. Plasma pyrolysis can also be used. Uh, ethylene oxide is used rarely, not in all hospitals. And also irradiation is also not used in all healthcare facilities. Okay. 
uh, for the risk it has for potential risk it has already has for uh, towards the technicians and the staffs who will be posted in these departments okay where ethylene oxide gas which is quite toxic in nature and irradiation in which gamma rays are used so these both may cause health concerns for the staffs so usually we we avoid using these two strategies in healthcare systems but in pharmaceutical or in, at an industrial level where sterilization is required okay uh, these techniques can be used storage after cleaning preferably it should be a closed storage not open storage moisture free zone okay should not have any ceilings should not leak or walls should not have any uh, mildews or leaks or fungi inf infestation or termite infestation these things should not be there wherever you're going to store your sterile or clean equipments or devices okay and restricted entry should be there wherever sterile devices are stored restricted entry should be there should be followed so this is about medical equipment devices and supplies in short okay in detail you can check the uh, recorded sessions from infection control playlist as well okay so is it clear to all Next is demolition, construction, and renovation. Whenever, in whichever part of the hospitals, these uh, situations arise, okay, when you have to demolish a part of a hospital, construct something new nearby hospital or within the hospital premises, or you have to renovate some structure in the hospital, what are things you have to take care of, okay? So air quality, why air quality? Every construction, demolition, renovation will lead to dust rising up, okay? These dust may or may not have some spores, okay, <coughs> bacterial spores or uh, uh, inactive viruses. Okay, since it is a healthcare system, you have you, you can expect some uh, infection uh, infection through the dust particles as well. So, how will you control the spread of dust particles? Okay, do you have a pro proper ventilation? Uh, will a proper ventilation will be put on? Exhaust fan would be put on. When the demolition is going on okay what will be the air quality during those time period okay how are you planning on infection control okay uh, will will you have some other routes uh, for patients to move around and visitors to move around and avoid the area where uh, construction is going on you can make some strategies like that that do not use this corridor because construction is going on use the other corridor okay so you can divert the traffic okay so that nobody is at the risk of getting infections when a construction is going on what utilities will be used water supply will it be stopped in certain section of the hospital electricity supply how it will be stopped or how the electricity will function when some construction is going on will you have some standby generator do you need some extra standby generator noise control okay every uh, how much ever you try to keep it down demolition construction renovation will always lead to some amount of uh, noise okay and it will definitely affect your patient uh, patient's recovery okay patient's rest and wellness will be affected in some or the other way so what plans do you have how do you initiate a, a, a temporary soundproofing situation for the nearby wards okay you can create a, a temporary soundproof situation okay uh like playing some mild music within the wards or putting some mattresses near the uh doorways okay with uh some doorways which is not used okay you can put some mattresses over there so that as much as possible sound can be cancelled out 
the main doorways and gateways where which is usually used by the uh, public or traffic that has to be kept open other areas can be shut out okay some some windows can be closed temporarily okay and some extra uh, other forms of lighting so source of lighting can be started within the ward so this way noise control can be uh, can be managed and also make sure at night there is no construction or renovation night time you have to make sure you have an environment where patients can completely rest and uh, regenerate okay so at night time after 5 pm no construction should be carried out then hazardous vibration also same way uh, the building kind of vibrates when you are using some um, uh, borewell instruments okay, etc okay so keeping some pacings between time space between uh, every round of using uh, big instruments for big uh, big uh, machineries for demolition or construction okay having a quiet time as well in between that could give a proper rest to the patients as well yeah. hazardous materials used in construction cement cement dust okay Especially if your uh, renovation is going around or happening around a pulmonary ward, a respiratory ward, you have to be very careful about this. What kind of materials are you using in your construction? Is it hazardous to the patients or the nearby environment? Emergency services, will it be disturbed? Okay. Will there be any changes in the emergency services? It has to be rectified. And control of infection transmission by air barrier precaution that is wearing gloves mask eye shield face uh, face shield okay so these can control the uh, using these these articles and also hand washing okay usually barrier precaution means uh, how do you con control the direct contact or direct air contact? Okay? So mask, face shield, eye goggles, uh, and uh, gloves. Okay? These are the main barrier precautions used to control the infection transmission by air. Then you will have airborne isolation rooms, airborne infection isolation room. It is negative pressure room, basically. So uh, if you have 10 ICU beds in your hospital, one should be an isolation bed. So at least one negative pressure isolation room you should have in your hospital. Completely dependent on how many uh, ICU, uh, ICU beds you have. Okay, 10% of the ICU beds should be isolation rooms or isolation beds. So when we talk about airborne infection isolation room, usually it is a negative pressure isolation room, okay, where you keep infected patients. The other form of isolation room is positive pressure isolation room where non-infected patients are kept to prevent them from catching any infection from the environment because they may be immunocompromised. Then temporary negative pressure isolation room. Uh, so this is created temporarily like if you have, if you are passing through a pandemic or epidemic in your area, okay. Uh, and you do not have enough number of isolation rooms, a temporary negative pressure isolation room can be created with exhaust fan. Exhaust fan, and if you have an exhaust fan, UV, uh, UV filter, and if you can slightly change the construction of your doors, you can just put the automatically closing kind of a situation for your doors, you can create a, a negative pressure isolation room within, uh, like you can convert any ward into a negative pressure isolation room. Exhaust fan should be there, UV filters should be there, and uh, automatically closed and shut, uh, open and shut doors should be available. Then HEPA filters, high efficiency particulate air filtration system should be installed. When OTs compulsorily should be installed. All operation complexes should have a HEPA filter. It filters out 99.99% of microbes. If, uh, up till the microbes who are less than five micrometer 
uh, in diameter okay that can also be filtered some of the microbes who are even less than five micrometer in the diameter those microbes can also be filtered out using HEPA filters so this was about in brief about the quality standards that you can follow for physical structures just read through the chapter if you have any queries you can ask in the chat box